NPR, that's National Public Radio's producer Casey Morell, he, him, announced via Twitter that the government-funded news outlet was launching its own disinformation team. This is like Snoop announcing his own anti-pot initiative. Do you think they have pot in heaven? I know they do. Like Gavin Newsom announcing his own anti-hypocrisy police. Or Joel Osteen. Wait, are those two? Joel Osteen announcing a Share Our Wealth task force. The idea of NPR creating a team dedicated to disinformation came as quite a surprise to over half of the country that was under the impression that such a team was the only one that NPR has ever employed. A team that time and again turned out top-notch disinformation, like announcing a data scientist was fired in Florida for not manipulating the state's coronavirus data. So other than the fact that she was never a data scientist, that she wasn't ordered to manipulate any COVID data, that she has a criminal record and was fired for multiple data breaches and essentially hacking, and that she was subsequently arrested and jailed, that's pretty solid information. Or the time that NPR reported that President Trump claimed without evidence that it appeared Kyle Rittenhouse was acting in self-defense when he shot and killed protesters in Kenosha. Well, other than the fact that the video itself was evidence and that Trump cited that evidence when he was giving his response, that's great reporting. Just like when NPR reported ominously on how the wave of bills to block trans athletes has no basis in science. Other than, like, all science, which shows that male bodies are structured at a physiological advantage over female bodies, thus the entire reason that we have divisions for female sports to begin with. They reported that Russia's military intelligence, the GRU, is suspected in the Afghan bounty case. The only bad info there is the fact that there wasn't an Afghan bounty case. Meanwhile, the stuff that there actually was, like a Hunter Biden laptop story, NPR refused to report that before the election and bragged about it, saying they don't want to wait waste our time on stories that are not really stories, and we don't want to waste our listeners' and readers' time on stories that are just pure distractions. Of course, it was a real story, and they were the ones distracting from it. NPR told how scientists debunked any lab accident theory of pandemic emergence. Then, of course, it turned out that it wasn't debunked, and the lab leak is now the most plausible explanation for the origin of the pandemic. NPR ran stories hailing New York Governor Andrew Cuomo as decisive, listening to experts, sticking to facts, and how he had been effective in the state's coronavirus outbreak. Right, and then other than ignoring how he trapped the most vulnerable people to COVID, the elderly, in these nursing home COVID death camps, and then lied about the data, also leaving out all the stuff about his sexual harassment, that's great info. Look, we all know how this works. It's like McDonald's announcing a new healthy burger team that goes out and finds all of the problems with every other business's burgers while ignoring their own. So I feel like the least that I can do is offer my warm wishes and best advice to the new disinfo cops over there at National Public Radio. And I'll do it by giving them this suggestion. When you get a tip about a flagrantly false story that's just out there to manipulate minds and try to push an agenda, trace the call. Inside the house. You hear me? It's coming from inside the house.